Yes, you can film a wedding entirely handheld. However, when I say yes, you can, this comes from someone that has a lot of experience handling the business side of filming a wedding, communicating with the bride and grooms, and has over hundreds of hours of experience filming and editing weddings. So I usually have a vision already of what I need to capture and know exactly where I need and can anticipate a lot of what will happen before they do at a wedding, mainly because a wedding is very spontaneous of an event and you never can really truly be prepared for everything that uh, is about to happen. However, you can go into a wedding with a shot list in mind and you strive to capture that plus more in case there is an ask for it by your client or bride or groom. With all of that said, it can be done by anyone and if you're wondering whether or not you can ditch the gimbal or you're trying to determine whether or not you should even buy a gimbal to start with to film weddings, I am absolutely talking to you. All the clips that you're gonna see in this video were taken from a wedding uh, that was filmed by 85% handheld and the other 15% was either on a tripod or on a drone. Weddings are generally made up of a few parts in this country and that is the getting ready, first low, the wedding ceremony itself, photography and videography romantics, reception, speeches and the toast, dances, cake cutting, bouquet and garter talk, reception fun, and then there's usually a exit of some sort. So let us start with the getting ready. Getting ready is probably one of the most challenging parts to film as you're walking into a small room with complete strangers, with the exception of the bride, and you are expected to film the makeup artist, bride, the bridesmaids, mom and the bride, the wedding planner, hairstylist. So that usually comes with a lot of pressure on the videographer and there are a lot of eyes on you and what you're doing because you just came in here and interrupted all of that. Also applies to the groomsmen as well too, but usually there is a lot less vendors and folks involved and usually the guys don't have as much stress on them to get ready. My biggest recommendation for you going into this situation handheld would be to keep it simple. Remember, each shot is not the entire wedding video. It's just a small piece of the puzzle, not the whole puzzle. You know, don't try to do these camera gimbal-like movements or jib crane arm movements. Uh, you just won't execute very well. Uh, because you just don't have the right tool to do those type of movements. So this wouldn't be the time to try something new, but instead take this time to keep it simple and warm up to the bride, groom, and the wedding party while doing your best to stay as stable as possible. Do your best at its best. Now on to the first look. The first look is pretty standard, of course. You will either be using two cameras or one camera. Now, if you're using just one camera, I recommend throwing your only camera on a tripod and face them from a side view as best as possible. The reason being is because the first look usually is extremely emotional and it gets really, really intimate quick and it's usually where the ice is broken between you and the bridal party and also the bride and the groom, most importantly. You pretty much have seen the bride and groom at their most vulnerable state. So the trust level now has greatly increased. So with that being said, you don't want to be holding the camera for possibly 15 to 20 minutes plus when they're getting really intimate here and really getting their emotions out. Uh, just don't put that pressure on yourself. Use a tripod and call it a day. The wedding is not a sprint, it's a marathon. You gotta get through that entire day. Now, the ceremony. Again, simple. Never, ever, 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 ever hold this, the camera during the ceremony. I mean, never. Things may go on longer than you expect, and you don't want the failure of the filming of the wedding to fall on your lack of strength after 10 minutes. Use a tripod and call it a day. Now, there have been a few elopement style weddings that I've filmed, and they confirmed that the ceremony was only gonna be a couple minutes long, just featuring vows, ring exchange, and a kiss. If that is the case, and you are 100% confident that they are sticking to that, then you may hold the camera, but just keep in mind to lean it against yourself, give yourself that third point of contact. Definitely um, do everything you can to preserve yourself. Whatever you do, don't move. <laughs> That's the pressure that comes with being on a handheld setup. You don't have the opportunity to move. You really have to stay in that position. So whatever position that you start recording in, that is a position that you need to finish recording in. Now, photography in the video segment. 
This is usually after the ceremony where they'll usually take some photos and you'll have a small opportunity to get some really cinematic footage and have a very small creative control space in this moment as well. This is where you can pretty much do some cool things with your camera now, like in your hand, you can do some experimental stuff if you want even, you know, uh, you know, like for example, uh, raising it up for a kiss and keeping it really low or do some type of veil thing or running or chasing after the bride or whatever. Just whatever you do, just make sure that you have practiced all this stuff beforehand. Make sure you've practiced doing it, but also communicating what you want. That's usually the main struggle for some videographers is that talking to the bride and groom and trying to explain what they want, they haven't actually said it out loud before. They've never actually had to communicate it to somebody. So practice talking to someone else before you go to a wedding and struggle to explain this idea you have, maybe with a friend, your own mate, or any other kids that you may have as well in your nearby vicinity. You may wish to capture some behind the scenes of the photographer doing some things uh, with the couple. This is a great opportunity to do some panning type simple shots. Remember, you don't have a gimbal. And so, you know, you wanna do these crazy pans, but keep everything really nice and slow, like super, super slow. This is also a great time to do like cutaway type things with trees, poles, and other objects in the foreground. Just keep in mind that your hands and your body are engaged with the camera and you have multiple points of contact with uh, practice and repetition and experience, you will succeed. For the reception, cake cutting and the speech, I'm gonna clump all of these into one category. Since these moments are already have a lot of movement, you don't really need to have a lot of movement in your shots. You just need to have a lot of different types of shots. Uh, you can get a lot of short takes of people laughing, talking, mingling together. You know, you need to keep the camera as still as possible in these moments as the audience isn't really caring about how cool this follow shot was of you following somebody, walking up to someone and then giving them a hug and rotating around them. They don't really care about that. Um, instead, the client or the bride and groom wanted to see that they hugged a certain person in general. Um, they want to hear what was said before the dinner or the food. Uh, they don't want to see movement at this time, uh, but instead they want to focus on the heartfelt message that that person is saying. So keep this in mind and just ensure that your audio, your exposure, and your white balance is consistent here. I say this because it usually is getting dark at this time of the wedding and lighting starts to change dramatically. And the cool thing is about holding your camera is that all of your settings are right there at your fingertips and you can focus on these elements more than some fancy movement shots. Now I'm gonna also combine the dancing, the tossing, and the reception fun kind of into one category as well. For these moments, you will have no choice but to move your camera. There is a lot of movement going on at this time, so you have a lot of options here. But to start, I recommend again keeping it simple. Just track the people of focus here and simply just follow the dancing as it happens. Do not walk if you can. Now, if your camera is heavy enough and you have acquired the ninja walking skill and you've got an experience um, and you've tested this beforehand, you may wish to walk around with the camera a little bit, uh, but that's not to say that it's not possible. Um, you can make it stable. It's just make sure that you've had that practice before you go in and doing that, okay? Now, lastly, let's talk about the exit. And this is pretty much straightforward because there's usually a lane that's already created by the people that are there and you can easily get at the end of the lane where the car usually is and let the bride and the groom run towards you. You don't need to move really and you don't really need to move the camera either. You simply stay there and capture all the action. If you do wish to move, you may find yourself pushing in maybe at the moment where they kiss, just give yourself a little bit of extension. Aside from that, you should be pretty much good to go. Um, this is probably the easiest shot to get. It's really mostly harder on the exposure and technical side with the white balance since there's usually gonna be literally no light here and maybe they may have sparklers or they may have bubbles or whatever may have you or fog. So I would worry about the technical aspects so that it's visible rather than trying to get movement in your shot. So that is pretty much a quick overview of how I shoot a wedding handheld without a gimbal and get a pretty much good product. Um, there is so much that goes into this, so please keep in mind that all of these are just my personal experience and thoughts, really, really condensed in a nutshell. Uh, there's always more than one way to accomplish the same thing, and there are exceptions to all of this that I've mentioned as well. But, you know, even myself, I'm always open to learn from you guys, so please share in the comments on ways that you would film a wedding handheld or maybe uh, some ideas that you would use if it would benefit me, it'd probably benefit everybody else here in the community as well too. So definitely do that as well. I'm really, really curious 
to hear what you guys have to say and what ideas and things that you can do to get around using a gimbal. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys are having a great day, a great week, a great month and year and stay positive. CB Cinematics out. See y'all.